Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Wonja. Last episode until the end of August, beginning of September. That will give me some time to prepare and record new episode and also give you some time to process all the information until now and uh, share it with uh, people around. I know a lot of you have been doing it and that's fantastic. Confronting yourself and a lot of people, it is not easy, but uh, it is definitely necessary for, for society to move forward and move past something that is long due. Today I want to talk about uh, family, family and love. Maybe that should have been my first subject, but it comes now and um, better talk about it now than never. Prioritizing in life allows us to make sure that we spend the limited amount of time that we have in a wise way. In a life where we are constantly busy and we have distraction offered here and there and being sold to us to cope with the endless rat race that we pledge allegiance to, it is vital for us to have an unshakable and unbreakable base, a base that you cannot rattle easily, that you can rely on. My personal base is my family, my family and friends, and my anchor, the one I go to in t- when the sea gets rough or when I need to recharge. But sometimes family can also be a burden and some family members can rob you of the base or at least make it difficult for you to have an even start in life or equal chances. I come from a racist family. My grandfather was racist and the most open racist act is done was to reject my mom. In fact, when she came home and told him that she was going to leave and uh, marry a black man, he pretty much gave her the choice of leaving my father or him to actually accept her still as a daughter and help her financially start a professional life. My mother picked for my father and decided to have no more words with my grandfather. We grew up as children not knowing my grandfather and just hearing the stories. Most of the time, not glamorous. And uh, one day came as we were visiting our grandmother, which one we had contact and which one we visited and uh, which one we visited actually uh, always outside of a house at my uncle's or in a tea, uh, in a tea house. One day we met up with her, with my father, my mom, and my brother, and we were supposed to meet her on a parking lot, pick her up and give her a lift. And I saw a man next to my grandmother. That man appeared to be my grandfather, which my mom right away noticed. And she told me, yeah, this is your grandfather to my brother and I. As we were approaching them, my grandfather realized that we were coming to their direction and changed direction and pretty much ran away from us. Looking at my mom's face, she was pretty angry and kind of in a way not surprised, but still angry and disappointed. And my grandmother was just like helpless, saying, yeah, he just left and just ran away. Uh, I don't remember the face my dad had, but he is not much one for showing emotions. And as for my brother and I, we're just like, okay, that was the guy we just heard so much about. The guy, not my grandfather. Years later, my grandmother passed away with with a cancer. And on the funeral, we've met again my grandfather, but we didn't really talk and we just said hi and uh, and that was about it. But since that moment, my mom and my grandfather started seeing each other more often, which means that whenever she would go there, most of the time we would be there as well. And uh, the man would just like talk all, uh, talk to us and just, but not really engage in anything really personal. It would just spend more time talking with my mother. I remember my brother and I just being there and just being bored bored to death, really teenagers, and just listening to them and just laughing to the fight that we were both falling asleep. But it was, in the end, showing some kindness to us and uh, giving us a lot of money. And uh, we just come back and we just come back, to be honest, for the money, nothing else, because uh, there was no relationship being built. There was no really, really interest for us, and no real, no really bond, no no connection at all. Nothing. You could feel that it was still a stranger. And the day came when my grandfather passed, and my mom asked us if we wanted to come to the funeral. And my brother and I both did not attend and did not go to the funeral. Not by lack of empathy, but. And not by anger or nothing, but just because of respect of uh, of the relationship we had with this man. We did not know him, and we had no relationship, no connection with him. And 
to this day, I remember I was really embarrassed because I was like, I want to pay respect to the man, but also I don't know what to do because I'm being honest to myself and I know I don't uh, have no love for the person, nothing at all and no sadness. So I ended up not attending it and still up until today I have no regret and I still feel the same about uh, my grandfather, someone that I didn't know that was just a, um, a shooting star in our life, not a shooting star, but <laughs> really, but more of a, how do you say, a blink, it was a blink, a blink in our life. And um, and that's about it. That tried to repay himself by uh, giving us money and make up for the time lost by uh, with uh, with financial means. I guess uh, the way he used to resolve uh, his uh, his problems. My dad never really talked about um, his experiences as a black man being with a white woman and uh, how it affected him. But I experienced it myself. As uh, as I was in Texas, I was dating this girl. And I wanted to take, to take her to prom, and um, she was delighted about it and uh, all excited and told me, yeah, I will just ask my father. I said, yeah, ask your dad, I think it's important. And uh, so she did that, and I didn't get any answer for a few days. So um, breaking the ice and wanting to know what was going on, I asked her, I asked her right away, what's, what's going on? You're not answering, and uh, what is the problem? You were all excited, and now nothing, I didn't get any answer. And she told me really embarrassed and sad that the dad has refused because not of me being um, a bad man and as he was really like uh, amazed of a person I was at that time for my uh, my maturity and uh, how good I was an athlete and uh, I, um, I work hard but I was black and unfortunately I was a threat to him I was a threat to his um, notoriety and reputation and I was a threat to maybe his business. And that he couldn't accept his daughter to uh, take that risk for himself. So in the end, at that time, I remember being sad and being uh, not angry, but just sad because it was a rejection for me. And uh, I was I didn't want to talk to anyone about it. I mean, you know, you don't want to be rejected by a girl at that time. And uh, that's when you build your self-esteem as a, as, a, as a teenager. So I didn't really talk to anyone about that. And in the end, I... Uh, went to prom with another girl that was mixed and uh and um and we had a great time so no regret about it and i never spoke to the girl but uh, i hope she's well and this was not uh, a unique case i was also i faced another case i remember well that's uh, i only talk about the first experience here because there are a few and it was, it was this will drag for for too long but i was dating this girl in a uh, university and um i will hope that in university people were a bit more open-minded and have a bit more uh, uh, you know, understanding of things and uh, that they were not, uh, they were part of a bigger world than their own world and their, their own self. But uh, that was not the case. I was dating this girl and um, and it came the moment when we talked about our parents and our families. And she told me with great sadness that uh, I would probably not be able to hang out with her in front of her dad because her dad always made a comment that if she would date a black man or Mexican or another minority, he will not accept it, and uh, it will come to some. It will come physical. It will become physical, and it will probably like uh, find ways to hurt uh, the person. I wasn't shocked again, but I was. I was just sad for her. I was just sad of her being in this situation, of having to choose between her father, and having to choose between her choices. So between the love of a father and the love of herself, of her choices and what she believed in. She was just being, once again, blackmailed emotionally. And from that on, we just decided to um, to stop after a while, knowing that it was really no future, as she was not able to uh, to break away from this and didn't have, at that time, the courage to, uh, to move on past this, uh, this situation and this dilemma. One story that doesn't regard myself, but a friend of um, of mine. She's uh, one of the most intelligent, strong, and driven women I've met, and also generous in her, in how driven she is. So trust me, when she chooses something, she chooses for her best interest and in something that is positive for her. So she's uh, in a family where refugees in um, in Europe. And uh, so they, you can believe they went through all the hardship of being a refugee or the discrimination and the financial trouble 
and the social rejection and so on and so on. And one day she brought a black boy boyfriend home, but instead of uh, having a welcome party, she got uh, quite the opposite. A mom basically told us, um, "I didn't. I, you could have brought everything, but I didn't think you would bring a slave." Maybe it's not the exact same word, but she say, "I didn't think. I didn't hope you would bring a slave home." A slave. It's a word that still gives me chills right now when I'm talk talking about it. It, it. it chills me all because of all the the all what it's linked to and all the pain and and what she could have meant to a slave because he's is uh is different from us and he means his life means less from us he's a commercial value to uh to us or a slave because he's gonna bring you great hardship and trouble in your life and uh because of his misery and the condition of being a black man i still can't wrap my mind around it and i find it one of the most violent thing i've heard in my life and one of the most violent thing you could tell someone and i can't even imagine myself telling this to to my child and my daughter how violent would i be racism towards a potential son-in-law has no color as you can see and neither ideology it is a shame that a parent was supposed in my eyes to love their kid no matter what they will decide for themselves and because they decided to spend their life with someone of a different skin color, religion, or sexual orientation, you will blackmail them or remove yourself from their life. It is rarely because your son or daughter is with someone that has a bad influence on them or is destructive. But it's here in my cases and the cases I've seen around is because you are removing yourself and blackmailing your kid because of a lack of self-esteem lack of knowledge of open-mindedness and and lack of self-love and completely giving into fear which someone sometimes can beg it into violence it's on a bigger level if you take back if you take a step back it's not uh, it is if you take a step back it is not an act of love it's an act of destruction a destruction of a spiritual bond between a child and his parents and I don't believe you can damage anything more than this. Nothing will ever fix this. It, it's, it's, there is no fixing possible. Money cannot fix it, as you can see. And we see that, uh, that in many conflict, taking on a bigger picture, on like many conflict or many genocide, you can always honor people and you can compensate them financially, but the people are not going to be fixed. They will spend money on distraction from their pain and they will try to find a temporary fix in order to alleviate the pain, the trauma, and the makeup for the emptiness and the damage but it won't fix it it won't fix anything in the community and it won't fix anything in a relationship the only way i believe to do this is to ask for forgiveness first from the person who've caused the trauma ask for forgiveness and recognize that you've been wrong it's the base to actually wrap it all out and just have the other person seeing you as a true self and be honest about it and then after i believe that you have to build a positive relationship a relationship where you're being generous when you are being selfless and you're loving the other person for who they are and the choices they are making and trust the other person for what they're doing so i would like to finish on this um, question a lot of us have children some of you will have children and the question is what price do you set on your children To not have a relationship with someone of color, with someone of the same sex, of someone of a different religion. What price you set on them to not have it and go by the way sacrificing the joy, the happiness, the experience about life and their freedom. What price you set on that and is it really worth it? What do you have to gain from this? Is it really worth it on what they have to compare to what they have to lose and compared to what you have to lose in the end what price do you set what is it thank you guys and uh, see you in a few weeks in the meantime share comment like if you want and as always discuss and challenge people around and yourself in particular thank you